right, guys. Uh, join me in the book of 1 Samuel. It's in the Old Testament. Very familiar scripture. 1 Samuel chapter 17. And then I'll tell you what my message is all about. It's in the Old Testament. In the very beginning, after Joshua and after Judges, you're going to see 1 Samuel before 2 Samuel. Amen. Let us stand for the Word of God and then we can sit down the rest of the evening. Primero de Samuel, capítulo 17, comenzando en versículo 32 a 37. Y no voy a predicar en español, nada más estoy showing off. Hi, <laughs> Cleopatra. Look, I'm wearing the shirt you bought me for Christmas. Yeah, just want to let you know. I do wear things that y'all buy me. Um, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 32. When you're there, say amen. The word of God reads, David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on an account of this Philistine, which is a big giant. Your servant will go and fight him. And Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You're only a boy, and he's been fighting man from his youth but David said to Saul your servant has been keeping his father's sheep when a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock I went after it I struck it and rescued the sheep from its mouth when it turned on me I seized it by its hair struck it down and killed it man David's a mean boy man verse 36 your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defiled fight the army of the living God, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Father, I pray right now that you anoint my lips and let it be you speaking through me. Open up the ears of every person that is in this house and I ask you that you speak to us, Holy Spirit. In your name we pray and everyone say, Amen, Amen. You may have a seat. My message, the title is Secret Battles, Public Victories. Secret Battles, Public Victories. On Sunday, I preached a message about we're going deep and we're going to get to the root of it. See, we're talking about crossing over to 2023 but we said, man, we got to get to the root of it, like the root of every sin. Like if you still drink alcohol right now and you say you gave your life to Jesus but you're still struggling in that, then we want to get to the root of it so you will not cross over with anything that ha has you like bondage. If you still smoke and you still do drugs or you still have anger, pornography, adultery, and uh, worry all the time, and all anything that you say, man, I don't want to carry any of this stuff with me to 2023, then we talked about getting to the root of it. So then we talked about on Sunday, talking about going so deep, and we talked about this gentleman by the name of Jehoash. Jehoash is an individual that was the, a king of Israel that comes to a prophet, Elisha, and asks him for advice. And the advice that Elisha gave him, he gave him some instructions to open up the window facing the east and grab the bow and arrow and then shoot the bow and arrow. And he's, he shot the bow and arrow. He told him, grab, grab the, the, the arrows and I want you to strike them on the ground. And Jehoash struck the arrows three times. And Elisha told him, you should have struck them four or five times, but you only struck them three times. In other words, when you, when you fight a devil, you can't just fight him and think you already got the victory because I already, I overcame this drug or I overcame this alcohol. It's like riding a motorcycle. Don't ever get too comfortable thinking you know how to ride and you're okay with everything. You, you got you, you to gotta, uh, respect it, Right? And the thing is, is with our lives, sometimes we want to get to the root of it, but we can't get to the root of it because we don't be consistent in our fighting. Uh, I've been saved 16 years. This past December, I've been 16 years that I've been saved. 
And in those 16 years, it's been a constant, constant battle. And you have to continue to fight all the time. And you can't just do it three times. You got to say, God said, man, I've given you some weapons. You only struck it three times. You should have done it four, five, six times and kept on going. Until you get to the root of it, until you kill it and destroy it. Because some of you are saying, man, uh, I've been saved 10 years, but I still struggle with cigarettes and, and I still uh, struggle with, with drugs and I still uh, struggle with pornography. It's because you got rid of some, but you didn't get rid of all of it. You, you got rid of the little one, the little things, but you still kept a few with you. You see a lot of those stories in the Bible where God said, man, you got to get to the root of it because we talked on Sunday when you cut like a, like, like a, a, a tree or you cut a, a rose bush just with the scissors in the bottom, what happens eventually is going to come back up. And that's what happens in our lives. The sin keeps on coming back over and over because we don't get to the root of it. The first thing we got to do is we got to recognize what is our weakness. What is it that is holding us down? And the thing is sometimes it's, it's uh, denial that I don't have a problem. I'm not an alcoholic. I only drink six beers. And I, when I got saved, I used to drink a case. And you should be happy. No, I'm not should be happy about anything. The devil is happy that you're still, you're still there with him. When you get to the root of it and you, you destroy it and you keep on fighting, no matter how much hell comes against you, that you keep on fighting, you keep on striving, you keep on moving, you keep on opening your mouth and say, devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And the devil eventually starts backing up, backing up, backing up to the point where you say, man, I'm going to go somewhere else to another house. Yeah, go to another house because in this house we serve the Lord. Hallelujah. So we talked about Jehoash and all that stuff and the prophet and stuff. And tonight I would like to continue on this topic dealing with the root causes. So I'm going to give you some points and I'm going to want you to write it down. Um, several important strategies for um, dealing with root causes. Okay. So number one. Somebody say number one. When in the secret chambers. I think we have it on the screen here. When. All these Christmas trees, man, you can't see nothing. When first in the secret chamber. Take some notes. When first in the secret chamber. Amen. You got it? All right. I'm going to read it. What happened between Elisha and King Jehoash in the secret chamber determined the outcome of the battle with Syria. It is what happens in the secret chamber. I'm going to say it again. What happened with the Lord between Elisha and King Jehoash in the secret chamber. Just leave it there until we switch to the next one. Determine the outcome of the battle with Syria. It is what happens in the secret chamber. Now, I wrote a scripture here. When in the secret chamber. In the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 6. Amen. Matthew 6 verse 6. When you pray, go into your room. And when you go into your room, shut the door. Pray to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Hallelujah. So when you go to the secret place, you go to the, ask yourself, do I have a secret place, a secret chamber that I can go and talk to the Lord? Where I don't hear no other voices. You see, you got to learn how to win in the secret chamber because when you go into the secret chamber, you got to win those wandering thoughts that come into your mind. Have you ever got on your knees and you're praying, but you're really not praying because everything's running through your mind about everything else? Yes? And it's hard to pray. Like when was the last time you got on your knees and you prayed and you prayed until you cried and you were just flat on your face? It takes a while to get to that point because your mind, you're in your knees and you're praying, but in your mind you're thinking about everything else. Yes or no? And how are we going to defeat any anything if we don't win in the secret chamber so here is Jehoash in the secret chamber with Elisha and they're having a conversation get your arrow get your bow and arrow and I want you to open up the window to the east can you imagine like there's some people like Jesus I know but God not to the east what about the west and a lot of people want to question God and you always want to I always have an answer for everything and you don't let nobody else talk you know anybody like that they want to have the last word. You try to explain to them, but they have all the answers and they know it all. And they need to learn how to keep their mouth shut and win in the, in the secret chamber and just learn to be quiet and know that God is God and God is in control and he's in control of every single thing. And until we learn how to win in the secret chamber, we're never going to defeat the enemy. 
And as you can tell, something happened because God, tell, God tells them, Elisha tells them, open up the window to the east and I want you to do these things, so forth and so forth. And he still messed it up. Just like us, we still mess it up. So we need to learn how to win in the secret chamber. Now, look at David and Goliath in the story we just talked about. It, it, David and Goliath in the secret chamber, we start, we start looking at uh, David and Goliath. And David, he tells Saul all about his secret chamber. Because he comes and he tells them, I mean, he's over here tending to his sheep in the secret. You know, nobody even knew who David was until God sent for him to go and anoint someone as a king, which was David. But then when he comes to the point where he comes to face the giant, and Saul tells him, you ain't got what it takes. This guy's been fighting forever. These suicide thoughts have been haunting you forever. Or these worriness has been killing you. Or this cocaine or this drug or this anger or this abuse or the pornography or the adultery. It's just been hunting you forever. You don't got what it takes. And then David turns around and says, man, let me tell you what I've done. When the wolf or whatever comes against it, when the lion comes and the bear comes, there was a lion that came and tried to take my sheep and I killed it. There was a, a, a bear that came and I killed it. What happened in the secret prepared him to have victory in the public. Hallelujah. Woo! The thing is, what he did over here, no, you think about all the battles that you have fought. And then when it comes to the public, when, when God will give you the victory in front of everyone, where, the, where people know that it had nothing to do with you, it had everything to do with Jesus. Amen. Has anybody gotten a victory? You say, man, if it hadn't been for the Lord, I would have never won this one. If it hadn't been for the Lord in the secret, I was crying, I was in pain, I was going through all this cancer, all these, all these treatments. But look at me in public, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. It went from stage four to stage, three. that's what I'm talking about, is the battle in the secret where you cried and no one, ever, no one ever saw your tears, no one ever saw what you went through, what you're going through. And then God says, it's all right, let, let them think that they got the victory. But when it's all said and done, if you keep on not just striking it three times, but if you keep on shooting and shooting and fighting and fighting and fighting, you're going to get to the root of it and you're going to destroy it. What came to destroy you, you're going to destroy it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But it takes for you to keep on fighting and fighting in the name of Jesus. It's, and and what, happens is, what happens is when you win in the secret chamber, when you win when it's, nobody else is watching, when nobody else is looking, when you don't need no credit, you don't need no pat on the back and say, man, I'm tending to the cheap. And when something came against me, I destroyed it. When I had to lost my house, nobody was there. But let me tell you, I lost my house. When I lost my car, nobody was there, but I lost my car. I'm talking about a lion and I'm talking about a bear. Okay, because I don't think anyone here has ever killed a bear or a lion with your hands. So let me use maybe when you got my lights turned off. I'm let me talk about myself. When I got my lights turned off or when I didn't have a refrigerator, I had a little ice chest. When they repossessed this car and then they repossessed the other car that was hiding behind this car. <laughs> when they turned my lights off and when they turned my water off and they got, they got so, so slick that they took my, my, the, the pipe, the meter off because they already knew me that I had channel locks and I would turn it on. <laughs> Nobody knows what I'm talking about, man. Nobody knows that the meters that they have now, you can't pull them out and take the little plastics off them. All right. Some of you are like, I know my son's like, what is he talking about? You don't even know. You don't even know that I had to be and win in the secret chambers so you could be sitting, <laughs> so I can be preaching, so I can be here and tell the devil, man, let me tell you. The devil tried to do all kinds of stuff, but I'm still standing, hallelujah. I'm still fighting, hallelujah. What I did in the secret, you don't even know the battles that I fought. But look at what the Lord has done. Yeah, hallelujah. The Lord in public has blessed me. The Lord in public has blessed you because you're still alive. You're still breathing. You're here. If you're here, you should open up your mouth and praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because you are all victorious in the name of Jesus. You are all more than conquerors in the name of Jesus. So number one is win in the secret chamber. Number two, use the sword of the spirit. We're still talking about Jehoash. And we're talking about Elisha, what happened last week. But it just so happens that I'm using the story of David. Because David, he won in a public victory. And I'm talking about 
how he won. We're talking about the sword of the spirit. And it says, Elisha told King Jehoash, take up the bow and arrows. If you were here Sunday, I got a little crazy and I started shooting arrows. And the people that are really square, they were looking at me like, cannot believe he's doing that. Believe it. My wife told me before I got up from the chair, she goes, what are you doing with the bow and arrows? She goes, nothing. She goes, you better not shoot them. And I grabbed them. And she goes, where are you going with them? Nothing. Honey, honey, honey. But because I'm the man. I said, silence yourself, Eddie. <laughs> and I came up here and then I started shooting. And then I heard it on the way home. He goes, can I believe you? Cannot believe it. Delia Wong almost got hit in the eye, and Rick got a bow right here. And I said, like, "Oh my gosh!" I said, "Maybe the the ones that got it is the ones that they, 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 they needed it, they wanted it, they took it. They they're warriors. They're <laughs> and my wife doesn't know that today I was gonna bring the one my my son brought a bought a real bow and arrow, but with the gun, the one that you shoot. Poof, and but my wife didn't let me. I don't know why. That was gonna be real cool. But check this out. Use the sword of the spirit. Elijah told King Jehoash, take up the bow and arrows. The apostle Paul said, take the sword of the spirit. It is the sword of the spirit, which is God's word. You got me? Because he tells him, tells Jehoash, take up the bow and arrows. Now, apostle Paul says, when you read Ephesians, it says, take the sword of the spirit. It is the sword of the spirit, which is God's word. That makes your counseling effective and truly Christian. So when you when you talk about the sword, use the sword of the spirit. Now we're talking about the sixth piece. When you we know when you read Ephesians, the sixth piece, like put on the whole armor of God. So it's talking about the sixth piece of the armor, which is the sword of the spirit. It represents the word of God. Now the the, the sword served as an offensive weapon. Against the enemy. Okay, you're still with me? Don't lose me. Now, you need to understand the power. Somebody say the power of God's word. You got to understand the power of God's word. Remember, we're in the secret chamber. Talking to the almighty God. Woo! The sword, the word of God. You got to understand the power that it has. Hebrews 4.12. It says this. For the word of God is alive and is active. Sharper than any two-edged sword, the word of God says. It penetrates, whoa, hallelujah, even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrows. Well, that's a sharp, whoa. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Through God's word, we can distinguish. Distinguish between right and wrong. Hallelujah. So you have to understand the word of God, how powerful it is. Let's keep on going. Number three, put your hands on the weapon. Come on, somebody just get a hold of it. Put your hands on the weapon. Elisha told the king to put his hands upon the bow. Then Elisha laid his hands upon the king's hand. Now watch. He tells him, Jehoash, get the bow. And then Elisha comes behind him and he puts his hands like a transfer of anointing, a blessing, a power upon his hands. He puts the hands upon the king's hands. And the biblical strategy is your hand upon the weapon of God's word and his hands on yours as you minister to the consulate. So watch this. I wrote something down here. Put your hands on the weapon. Tell your neighbor, the Holy Spirit... Nah, tell them like you, the Holy Spirit. Tell them the Holy Spirit wants to place a razor sharp sword in your hands. Just let that marinate. Woo! Some of you are like, I'm gonna cut myself. Come on, the Holy Spirit, He wants to put a razor sharp sword in your hands. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. How would you like? God to give you a weapon that can rip to shreds the devil's strategies against you. Listen, I'm here to tell you that he's already given you that. 
He's already given you that sword in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17. It says this. Declare that God has given you the sword of the spirit. Ephesians 6 17 declares this. It declares that God has given you the sword of the spirit. Now, the word sword in this verse is the Greek word for, I'm going to try to say it because you have to say it like, Mahara. Mahara. Somebody say, Mahara. Come on, do it like, like you get a Mahara. <laughs> Maharia. Mahara. That's the Greek word for sword. In other words, the word that demands for the minds of the who hear it, this is something that a word that demanded fear in the minds that hear this word. When you hear the word mahara, somebody go like that. <laughs> We're going to make you actors here tonight. The word that brings fear or demands fear in the minds of those who hear it is this word. This was just no ordinary sword. We're talking about the mahara, the word, the sword. It's not just any ordinary sword. This was a brutal weapon. Woo! If you're going to get to the root of it, you can't come with a little butter knife. You got to come with a mahara in your hand. <laughs> When you go to the restaurant, if you go after church, tell them, can I have a mahara to spread my butter <laughs> on my tortillas? Two maharas, please. They'll probably bring you like a drink from the bar or something. Just make sure you explain what it is, all right? This mahara, this sword, is a brutal, brutal weapon. The sword was used, watch this, in close combat. See, because there's a lot of other swords that talks about in the Bible, the big heavy sword. But this one that is talking in the Ephesians, the word of God, that is strong, that is sharp. This is the one that was used in close combat. I mean, you got to face the enemy. Close combat. You got to be like David and run to the giant. And you got to say, man, I'm taking you down. You're not going with me to 2023. You're not, you're not going with me. You can't tag along. And you got to get your mahara. <laughs> you got to get your sword. Close combat, and you got to destroy it. Oh, my goodness. This mahara is very deadly, and it's a frightful weapon. Oh, my goodness. You got to be careful. Not everybody can handle this one. That's why a lot of people still have things, you know, hanging around because you're using a butter knife. Uh, I don't want you. And poof, right back because they're not using the mahara. They're not using the word of God. When you use a word of God, demons tremble in the name of Jesus. When you use a word of God, the demons have to run in the name of Jesus. But when you have a little butter knife, they will be right there. The demon's not afraid of you. Eh, whatever. I hear you say that all the time. And that's why you're still going through what you're going through. You're still addicted. You're still, you're still cussing. You're still drinking. You're still smoking. Because you're a weak soldier. I wouldn't even call you a soldier. You're just weak. A weak Christian. That you call yourself a man of God and a woman of God. You praise him with your lips, but your heart's so far from God, you're just nothing but a bunch of hot air. Hmm. That was a mahara word right there. You see what I mean? Mahara, that, that word is powerful, man. It, I, oh, oh, is he talking about me? Yeah, the shoe fits. Mahara is talking to you. Because it hurts, because the thing is, it's the truth. But the truth will set you free in the name of Jesus. See, because your pastor, your friends, your deacons, and nobody may know your thoughts. But this, this sword cuts to the innermost. It pierces, it penetrates. It exposes when it to be exposed in the name of Jesus. And when you get to the root of it, and then you expose it, because you got to do it. God can't do it for you. Some people call me all the time. They call me all the time. And they call me and they call me. Pastor, I'm tired because of my son or because of my daughter. Drawing drugs and I don't know what to do. Give me the number. I call them. They don't want no help. Call back the family. I did that today to a, several of them. I said, ma'am, sir, uh, they don't want to go. I know, but I'm tired. You're tired, but they're not tired. Until they are tired and when they surrender their lives, then that's when 
that's when it'll work. And I know you're tired, and I, I hate to call you straight up, but I can't take them with me. Because if I do, it's just an emotional thing. It's just for, because it's getting cold outside. As soon as the weather gets better, they'll be right outside. I ain't wasting my time. The thing is, is God, you cannot play with God. Either you're going to be in or you're going to stay out. Just, I'd rather you just stay out instead of playing with God. Because God is not a God you can play games with. He's not a convenience store where you can come in and out. God is God Almighty. He is the creator of heaven and earth. You're here and breathing because of Jehovah Jireh, because of the King of Kings. You are in this house. Hallelujah. So this, this, this word, this sword is used for close combat. And if you're fighting from a distance, you're never going to win. If you draw near to God, God will draw near to you. And that's where the power comes in. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is out in the world. And there's some people that don't have no power. You look like you have power, but you ain't got no power. The thing is, is God is looking for men and women of God that will be so humble that admit it and say, man, this is my weakness. And God says, come on, you need me to, you need me to step in? Yes. Okay, if I step in, I'm going to start pruning. I'm going to start cutting. And those who abide in me, hallelujah. Those who do not abide in me, I'm going to put you, round you up and throw you to the fire. But those that want to stay connected to me, I'm going to cut some things that's going to hurt you. But I have a plan for you. I'd rather it hurt now so 2023 you can walk around with your hands lifted up and praise in the name of Jesus. Free indeed. Hallelujah. Praise God. <sighs> There's not too many people here so if you think I'm looking at you, I'm not looking at you. I can't even see anybody. Some of you feel like I'm talking about you. But I said it earlier. Number four. Open up the window. All right, Josh, that's a cue. Let's do it. Open up the window. Open the window. It says here, Israel's enemy was to the east. So Elisha told the king to open the window eastward. God wants you to open up the windows, watch this, of every area of the counselee's life to enable them to be confronted to confront their failures. Like, can you open up your window? And then you just allow it to, to watch, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read something here. <sighs> prepare to attack. Amen. Because when you're prepared, open up the windows, problems, and bondages caused by the enemy. Open the windows towards the enemy. And prepare to attack every issue with the word of God. Hmm. When you prepare to open up the windows and say adultery, pornography, anger, abuse, abuser. You open up the windows, open it up. And then now you got you to gotta, you gotta get prepared for battle. Because once you open it up. You speak it. You say it. You got to get ready for what's about to happen next. Because there's a lot of you right now dealing with some crazy things that are, need to be uprooted in the name of Jesus. Because next year is going to be the same old thing. Some of you said 2022 would not be like 2021. And 2022 is worse than 2021. We want you to go and say 2023 is not going to be like 2022 because I opened up the windows, hallelujah, and I fought the good fight and I confronted the devil and what was done in the secret in 2022, now I'm in the open, in the public, the devil is going down, hallelujah, and I'm going to be like David, I'm not only going to stop right there, I'm going to go up to the devil, pick up his head, get his own sword, cut his head off and pick it up to the air. And tell the devil, you got another thing coming. You're messing with the wrong man. You're messing with the wrong. Come on, somebody say, you're messing with the wrong person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say, open up the window. Come on, open up the window. Come on, open up the window. Come on, open up the window. Ah. 
Hallelujah. Number five. Somebody say number five. Hallelujah. The number of grace. Number five says this. Shoot. Because Elisha tells Jehoash, open up the windows. Put your hands to the weapon. And then he says, get your arrow. And then shoot, he says. Shoot. You got you to gotta fight. Elisha told the king, shoot. And the king shot. The open window towards the enemy, watch this, is not enough. The weapon in your hand is not sufficient. Even God's hand upon your hand will not win the battle. You must follow the command of the Lord of hosts to shoot. Watch this. As you speak, watch this, as you speak the prophetic, powerful, specific word of God. In other words, the mouth, you need to open up your mouth and tell cancer, you are dead, you are gone. You open up your mouth and tell addiction, you are gone in the name of Jesus. You got power in the tongue. Use it to kill the devil. Open up the windows and shoot. Open up your mouth and speak a word of victory. Come on, somebody say, I'm victorious. I'm the head. I'm not the tail. I'm above. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Speak it, speak it, speak it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Alright guys, who still has alcohol all in your refrigerator? Any, anyone here? You don't have to raise your hand, it's alright. You know who you are. Who still has all these bottles and ready for New Year's in your... Don't raise your hand. Who still has a little little weed, a little, a little magazine underneath there? Who still has a little anger? A little... Anybody have a little, a little bit there? You got to open up the windows. You got to open up. I, 2005, I had to open up the window. Flush the cocaine down the toilet. Struck it. Not once, not twice, not three times. Because it wasn't going to be enough. I had to come home. The window open. I had to get a hold of my weapon. The word of God. Because I know that I had to go. I still had something waiting for me at the house. Just like some of you. And I, the war, the battle was not over yet. I could have said, I feel good. I flushed down the cocaine. I'm good. But some kind of way, God gave me this wisdom. He used the foolish thing of the earth. And he gave me something in the inside that I, I refused to go back to that mess, but I still had something to go and bite. So I went to my house and I opened up my garage where all my scales, I have a cousin back there that knows exactly what I'm talking about, where I had all my baggies and all my scales and all this stuff and I had to face it and I had to open up my mouth and I had to speak a prophetic word, a powerful word that I say, you, cocaine open up the refrigerator you alcohol that's been causing damage to my wife my family you will no longer no longer overtake me you are under my feet I got the victory hallelujah some of you need to go home and open up the windows and get every single thing and throw it down on the toilet for it to never ever come out come on praise the name of Jesus hallelujah Let the light in. Let the light in. Let the light in. 
One more, one more, the last one, number six. It says this, persevere to the root of the issue. Persevere, watch this, to the root of the issue. Elisha told the king to take the arrows and hit them on the ground as a symbol of his victory. The king did this but only struck the ground three times and then he stopped. Some of you will go home, get rid of some of it, but keep a little bit because I'm not ready. I don't want to be a hypocrite. You'll never be ready. Be a hypocrite and come to church. You know how many hypocrite people are in the church? Just come as you are and let the God Almighty, hallelujah, take away what needs to be taken away. Ain't no man, ain't no pastor, ain't no church can remove anything. But God Almighty can do all things, hallelujah. If you just open up the windows, open up your heart and let him come in, hallelujah. And it says, Elisha said to the Lord, wanted the enemy to be totally consumed by striking the ground only three times the king this is a lot of people the king settled for partial victory some of you have victory partial victory why am I going through this because you you know you're an adult you know better than that come on come on look at your neighbor and say you know better than that look at your other neighbor because that one might be afraid of you tell him you know better than that now tell him why are you still doing it oh yeah Come on, tell the other one, why are you still doing it? I want, listen, hold on. I want conviction to fall here in this house. I'm serious. I'd rather, I'd rather you hear it now than you get to the gates and God tells you, depart from me, I never knew you. I'd rather you get convicted and offended and upset and do what you want to do, cry and say, I can't believe it. Believe it. The word of God, hallelujah. This is a true word. It is sharp. It penetrates and it hurts. It doesn't feel good. But God loves you so much that he doesn't want you to stay right there. He wants you to take you up to heaven. He has a mansion prepared for you and I. Hallelujah. So I don't know about you, but I'm ready to open up the windows. Hallelujah. Come on. Somebody praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Open up the windows. Let the light open up the windows. I'm almost done. Let, let me just read this. Watch this. I was looking for some stories and I found this story. A certain man, a certain ruler asked God, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not give false testimonies. Honor your father and mother. All these things I have kept since I was a boy, God, when Jesus heard this, he said to him, you still lack one thing. Whew. Sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When he heard this, he became very sad because he was a man of great wealth. This man was a good moral man, a law abiding person. He had kept many commandments of the word of God faithfully. But he had a root issue in his life that needed correction. He valued money more than his commitment to the Lord. Woo. This was evident when Jesus told him to sell what he had and come and follow him. Sadly, the young man rejected Christ's counsel, went his own way, and missed his divine destiny. Don't miss your divine destiny. There's another story that I found. A, I, I, I use this story in my GOD all the time. Is that a multitude of disciples were following Jesus. They were excited about the miracles. Like a lot of people, I'm excited to hear the good stuff. They're excited about the miracles they were witnessing and the anointing teaching they were receiving. But when the Lord shared truth the way I'm doing right now, they did not want to accept 
many of them turned back and no longer followed him. I pray you don't get upset and never come back. The root of the problem was that they rejected the word of the Lord. And this resulted in them turning back to their old lives. In every constant situation, there's a root cause of problems that must be exposed on the basis of the scripture. It is at the point that the counselee, which is each and every one of us, will either accept or refuse God's word. Sadly, many are like the rich young ruler and these followers of Jesus. They refuse the word, go away sorrowing, and return to their old lives. Do not perceive responses like this as a personal rejection or failure. The Bible says, therefore, he who rejects these instructions does not reject man, but rejects God, who gives you his Holy Spirit. Watch this. I'm done with this. What is the root cause? It is vital that you persevere to discover the root cause of every problem. For example, the root cause is not a drug addiction. It is what is fueling the drug addiction. The root cause is not immorality. It is the lust resulting in the immoral behavior. The Bible commands us to diligently seek and destroy the roots of sinful behavior. Looking diligently, lest any man fell of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Hebrews 12, 15. If the root causes of a problem are not dealt with, then problems will only intensify. When, is when Israel invaded the promised land, God told them, watch this, this is good. God told them not to allow any of the enemy remain. Whatever it is, don't let a little bit. Don't compromise but the Bible records that Joshua spared giants in three cities, Gaza, Ashdod, and Gath. Okay? hope I'm saying it right. Gaza, Ashdod, and Gath. If I'm not saying it right, just go with me. Later, the Bible relates that Samson got in trouble in Gaza. Or Gaza. The ark of God's glory was lost in Ashdod. And Goliath paralyzed the troops of Israel in Gath. None of these tragedies would have occurred had not the giants been left in the land. Israel left a fruit and it bore fruit. Giants beget giants in both the natural and spiritual worlds. Eliminate the spiritual giants of sin and then you will no longer reproduce. Wow, that's good. This is so true. Think about the things that you might not think about right now. In the long run, how it will affect you. And then all of a sudden, said, man, I should have never opened that door. I should have just kept it shut. Remember Sunday, I had a door here. Shut the door. And when you hear it knocking, what do you do? You praise God. You get a little louder and louder. Sometimes you don't praise God and you keep on hearing the knock. And then you open the door again. What did I say Sunday? Dumb. Somebody say, dumb yeah you keep on opening the door dumb that's dumb the door shut let's do what, do what we did when the door when the door knocks we're gonna raise it up remember okay the devil's gonna come he's gonna do this come on listen Hold on. Okay, now stop. Y'all don't get it. It looks like y'all weren't here on Sunday. I don't know where y'all were at. I should have been here. You are in control of the thermostat. You can change the atmosphere. No one puts you out. You put yourself out. You're depressed because you want to be depressed. You're sad because you want to be sad. You're going through what you're going through because you want to go through what you're going through. You got the power. You got the authority. But the thing is, you're not even using any single thing. You're not getting a hold of the weapon. You're not listening to the word of God. You're not, you're not actually winning in the chamber. You're not doing any of that. You're not shooting. You're not opening the windows. You're not doing nothing. And the thing is, every time you hear, there you go. No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Every time you hear this, dumb, you go and say, what? I promise you. And you dumb, okay, okay, come on. Una fresquecita after work because, oh, you're tired. Dumb. Ah, just one. Dumb. Just one time. Dumb. 
Dumb, 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 dumb. Dumb. And the thing is, this is what you got to do. When you hear the door knock, you have, the, you have control. If you're in your car, you get the phone call, you get the knock, and you know the eagle, that's temptation. I want you to change the atmosphere. Here we go. Come on, here we go. Devil, I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. What happens, you're, the devil knows you're going to open the door every time. But now that you got the weapons, now what you're going to do is say, I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. And instead of me going back to the drug, I'm going to praise his holy name. Because when you praise God, the devil has to flee. Hallelujah. So why don't we right now praise the name of Jesus and every single thing that needs to leave, leave right now. Come on. Hallelujah. Can you imagine all the time doing that? Who was not here Sunday? Raise your hand if you were not here. Okay. Thank you for being honest, okay? We talked about when you go home tonight and your wife starts. You know how she is sometimes? Somebody like, man, it's about time you say something about the wives. I want to say it, but I don't want to say it. And then your wife, what you going to do? You're going to. Turn the volume on. <laughs> Open up the window. Because you don't got time for that. Vice versa, when the husband starts telling, you crank up the volume. Not that you're going to ignore them, but grab their hand and say, babe, we're too blessed to be stressed. Let's praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's lift up the holy name. Hallelujah. Give the devil a black eye in the name of Jesus. You got to learn how to fight the devil. Open up your mouth and praise his holy name. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> All right. I want everybody to just lift up your hands right there where you're at, please. Because there might be somebody in this house that said, Pastor, before the year is over, I need that strength, Pastor. I need that. I need to, I need, I need to learn how to win in the chamber, Pastor. Because my mind's all over the place. And God says, You came to the right place. Dwell on me, God says. Don't dwell on your problems, your circumstances. Dwell on me. Tonight's your moment, guys. You have reached a moment of your life that you have an opportunity to say, God, we're going to get a hold of you. We're going to get a hold of your word. Because if it's that strong, Father, then I need that. I need that sword. I need that word. So I can be able to open up my mouth and shoot and defeat every single thing that is coming against me. Because I just feel like there's a lot of pressure coming against the body of Christ. I feel like there's a lot of pressure coming against the body of Christ. And the devil just walk, walking right through everyone. But if we lock arms and we stay strong. And as the devil comes because we know what to do. We open up our mouths and we fight the good fight of faith. The devil can't move you. You become like what the word of God says. Be immovable and unshakable. And we need men and women of God to be unmovable and unshakable guys in here. We need you to be strong so when 2023 comes around, you can look at 2022 and say, man, whew, I might not like where I'm at right now, but I thank God I'm not where I used to be. I came a long ways. Think about how far you came. You came a long ways. So with our hands lifted up, I want you to say this prayer. There might be somebody in this house that you do not have Jesus in your life. You say, man, or maybe you just left his presence. Say, man, I want to give my life to God before I finish this year. Start off with a relationship with God. God, I want you to picture him knocking on the door. Have you opened that door and said, God, come in. 100%. Because when you go home, remember what I said? Some of you need to go home and you have things you have to face still. There's battles you haven't, you haven't uh, even touched yet. And God says, don't leave here without the whole armor of God. In other words, don't leave here without me. 
I'm going with you. The battle's not going to be yours any longer. I'm going to fight for you. And if you're ready for that relationship, man, God is ready to come on in. Here we go. Repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for all my sins. I know you died on that cross for me. And on the third day, you rose again. I believe that with all my heart. I ask you that you come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Come on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that again. I ask you that you come into my life. Come on, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Come on, mean it. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Jesus, I surrender it all to you today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Come on, hallelujah.